This video is supported by Skillshare. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Zoe. Zoe is a French Bulldog, which is a breed that really shouldn't exist. It's a combination of a Boston Terrier, a Pug, and a an you know, English Bulldog. It's kind of a Franken dog. And uh, they were designed really for only one purpose, and that is to look cute. And she's good at it. What she's not good at is breathing. This squat nose of hers is what they call brachiocephalic, which means that she winds up snoring throughout the night like a friggin' chainsaw. And also, because of her uh, bratwurst-shaped body, she can't actually get down to clean herself after she does her business. So I have to do that for her, lest little bits of nastiness wind up in our, you know, our bed and our clothes. In fact, because of the way that they're built, French Bulldogs can't actually have sex. So the only way to breed them is through artificial insemination, which is why they're so expensive. But who cares? So what if they can't, you know, reproduce or clean themselves or breathe? They weren't designed for that. They were designed to be companion dogs. And for that, they are incredibly good. Zoe always just wants to be right next to me except for when I'm trying to record a video, clearly. All right, you can go, you can go. And now I have dog hair all over me. Dogs have been bred for all kinds of purposes, from hunting to protection to herding, getting moles out of the garden, even racing. Over thousands of years, we've transformed wolves into helpful, even life-saving companions. That we've changed dogs over time is no surprise. What might be a surprise is how much they've changed us. Along the way in our evolution from advanced primates to hairless advanced primates, there have been several technologies that have helped speed things along. Our ability to harness fire, our ability to communicate through language, our ability to make weapons out of stone and metal. But perhaps the thing that set us apart from all the other animals most was our ability to use other animals for our benefit. Human beings are only so strong, we're only so fast, we can only perceive so much through our senses, so there's only so much that we can achieve. But we eventually realized that if we harness the abilities of other animals, we could achieve so much more. We could be as strong as an ox, we could be as fast as a horse, and we could be as perceptive as a dog. Dogs are a technology. One of our very first technologies. Dogs and humans go way back, long before anything resembling recorded history, which means we have no record of there ever being a time without dogs. It's believed that domestication of dogs began around 30,000 years ago. This is when we first start to see dog bones being buried alongside human bones, or at least in proximity of human bones. So the theory goes that humans were hunter-gatherers, and wolves at the time weren't just seen as a competitor, but a threat. They hunted in packs, they were smart, they hunted the same prey we did, they also hunted during the day like we did. But along the way, some of these wolves realized that picking off the scraps that the humans leave behind is a lot easier way to get food than hunting on their own. And these were probably some of the more docile wolves that didn't want to have to fight the other wolf for food. These docile wolves grew to trust the humans and vice versa. Over time, they began to rely on them. It became sort of a symbiotic relationship. And the pack mentality shared by both species kind of helped them become sort of one integrated family of sorts in a, in a, in a social sense. You know, these, these wolves would protect the humans from other predators and the humans would provide food and shelter. And eventually, they learned how to hunt together. And over time, humans learned that if you bred the more docile dogs with other more docile dogs, you would create even more docile dogs. So they started breeding for this and other traits, so that by the time we actually started writing things down, we had specialized, intelligent, loyal breeds of dogs that made our life completely different. It was only after we domesticated dogs that we were able to domesticate other animals. Humans began to realize that instead of chasing after that big beef machine or hunting down and killing that thing that grows our clothes, we could just, you know, put a thing up around them. Of course, putting them inside of a thing made it impossible for them to escape predators, which means that you would have to watch them all the time, which would be especially difficult at night. Dogs made that possible. They not only protected the herds, they also kept them in line and ran runaways back in there. A well-trained team of dogs could do the work of dozens of people, freeing them up to do more important things. Thanks to dogs, we went from hunter-gatherers to farmers and ranchers. Of course, the agricultural revolution led to the rise of cities and trade routes, money, mathematics, and language to keep track of all that stuff. It led to civilization. Now, would we have gotten there without dogs? Maybe. But then maybe not. 
Once upon a time, we were just a fledgling species trying to eke out our survival just like any other species. I've talked in videos before about how we almost went extinct a couple of times. It was pretty precarious. Without this beneficial partnership, who knows? We actually partnered with and lived with dogs for so long that some people actually think that both of our genetics have been changed because of it. It's led to a connection with dogs that we just don't have with any other species. To the point that many people think that their dogs can read their minds. But can they actually read our minds? Or are they just so attuned to our behavior and our micro-expressions that they can tell what we're thinking before we outwardly express it? For example, my dogs always seem to know when I'm gonna leave the house to go take a meeting or go to work or go do something uh, when I get up in the morning, even if I'm not doing anything different. You know, I, I stumble out of bed, I throw on some clothes, I put them outside, I put some food in their bowl. I'm not doing anything different, but I can tell they're, they're acting differently toward me. They can, they can tell something's up. And of course, I'm so attuned to their micro expressions that I can tell that they can tell what's going on. You know, I, I, can, I can see the sadness in their face when they can tell that I'm gonna be going away for a while. And I can see the anticipation and the excitement when they can tell that they're gonna be going to the park. In fact, a recent study in the journal Scientific Reports shows that dogs make more facial expressions when a human is looking at them than when a person is looking away, even if there's no food or treat reward involved. And this indicates that it's not some kind of subconscious movement on the dog's part. It's actually a way for them to communicate with us. And dogs have one of the most expressive faces in the animal kingdom. It could be argued that our faces and their faces kind of co-evolved to be able to read each other's expressions. And dogs also seem to be particularly attuned to our gestures in ways that other animals aren't. There's sort of a famous experiment called the object choice task that some researchers have done where basically a person points to a cup and the dog knows that the person is pointing to that cup. In other words, they're asking, does the dog know what we mean when we point at the cup? And it turns out that they do sort of genuinely have an instinctive knowledge that we are pointing at an object. It's not about our finger, it's not about our hand. It's a symbolic gesture to something else. Not many other animals actually pick up on this. Not even chimps, our closest genetic relative. And according to champion dog trainer Kale McCann, sometimes a look is all it takes. Because we know dogs are masters at reading body language, we utilize these responses to teach our dogs basic things like sit or lie down, or even more advanced things like high level competitive agility training. If I turn my head to my left, my dog will run to my left side. If I turn my head to my right, my dog will run to my right side. And I can even use that head change to teach her to go back and forth to either side of my body. But some people say just the fact that the dogs can bond with us so strongly that they can you know, guess our gestures so well shows that there's a lot of co-evolution that's happened here. There's a really interesting article about it. I'll link to it in the description. Now one last point about the human-dog connection that I think is interesting is the fact that we haven't really needed dogs for work purposes in general for quite some time, but there's still dogs around. In fact, there's more of them than ever before. And yes, some of them are still working dogs that serve a special purpose, but most of them are just pets, just dogs that we keep around just because we have this instinctual feeling that our lives are better with them in it. And maybe part of this reason is oxytocin. When humans and dogs interact with each other, we both produce this hormone called oxytocin, which is often called the cuddle hormone. It produces feelings of love and closeness. We actually have a physiological response to each other. Okay, so this is where the cat people are probably pulling their hair out and screaming at their phones because I'm kind of making it sound like dogs are the only animals that people have a connection with. And of course that's not true. In fact, a lot of the things I'm saying about dogs could also be applied to cats, you know? Cats were very useful back in the day, especially on sailing ships and in cities where they were mousers and ratters. If it wasn't for cats, we would probably be overrun with rodents and snakes. And yes, of course we formed a bond with them that for many people is every bit as strong as a connection that a human could have with a dog. I have a cat myself, actually. He's not here. He's out probably sitting on a windowsill somewhere, being a cat. All of which brings me to one last point, which is that the whole human-dog connection thing, the whole symbiotic relationship that we have, isn't unique to humans and dogs. It's not even unique to humans. We've worked with and bonded with horses, the aforementioned cats, many different types of beasts of burden, even birds of prey. But it turns out this is not that uncommon. You know, we like to think of nature as a well, a dog-eat-dog -dog world where every species is battling each other out for supremacy. But in fact, interspecies relationships and partnerships are common and quite vital. 
Birds often partner with crocodiles to clean their teeth for them, lampreys clean out the gills of sharks, and crabs often carry sea urchins on their back for protection. But humans have bonded more strongly with more animals than any other animal in the world. And maybe that's what made all the difference. Maybe our ability to harness the advantages of other animals is what set us apart. Maybe the lesson here is that instead of being competitive, being cooperative yields the best results. Maybe it's that side of our nature that actually helps us out the most. Because if dogs have taught us anything, it's that doing things together is a lot more fun. So I'll put the question to you. Do you have a dog? Do you ever feel like it can read your mind? Do you feel like you have a special connection with a dog or a cat or any other kind of animal? Talk about it in the comments. And of course, if you do have a dog, one of the best things you can do is spend time training with them. It not only builds a bond between you and the dog, it also encourages good behavior, and it's just, it's just fun for the dog. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you might want to check out the Canine Masterclass course from Tatiana Ambros on Skillshare. In this class, she teaches several training techniques designed not just to get your dog doing tricks, but to build a bond with your dog. This is especially good if you have a new pup in the home, but it's also a fun thing to do with a dog you've had for a while. A little extra attention goes a long way. This, of course, is just one of thousands of different courses that you can take on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where experts share their knowledge in everything from accounting to photography to cooking, software development, dogs, you name it. And the first 500 people who sign up from watching this video will get the first two months totally for free. Just use the link in the description below. So try it out. You got nothing to lose and you might learn a new skill that changes your life. Visit the link in the description down below and try out Skillshare today. I want to thank Ken and Kale from McCann Dogs for chiming in on this subject today. They're good friends of mine and they're excellent world champion dog trainers. You can check out their channel uh, in the description down below too. And as always, a huge thanks to the Answer Files on Patreon who are keeping the lights on around here, supporting this channel, helping it grow. You guys are awesome. There's some new people that have joined the tribe. I want to call out their names and murder them real quick. We got Yves L.F. Girard, uh, John Boren, Pender Industries, Brad Mobley, James Aspenwald, Kevin Reed, Hayden Beck, Roy Varley, Brian Skeen, Joan Kudrat Martin, TJ, Richard, Eric Matheson, uh, or Mathiason, Pet Peter uh, Perinu, Dale Horn, Romeo Joy, uh, Jan Jameson, John Jameson, and Christopher Clark. Okay, got through it. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them and get early access to videos, behind the scenes stuff, and just access to me and our Discord server, it's all a lot of fun, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. Right, please like and share this video if you liked it, and if this is your first time here, Google thinks you'll like this video. Don't let Google down. Take a look, see if you like it yourself. And if you do, and you check out some of my other videos and you like them, I encourage you to subscribe. I do put out videos every Monday and every Thursday. Also, t-shirts available at the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. The ones that you buy there are not covered with dog hair. That's always a plus. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out now, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.